Suppose we have a convex lens, and it has a positive focal length, and an object beyond the focal point. So we have red, green, blue for the three rays. Principal ray, parallel, goes through focal point. Second ray, the green ray, through the center. It's like a window, so it goes straight through. Third one, through the near focal point, bends and goes parallel, and there's your image. All right, what about a diverging lens? We have two focal points. I use X's for those so I don't get them confused. If I have an object here, the parallel beam bends away from this focal point. Beam through the center, goes straight. Now the third beam, we don't aim for this one. It's like they're swapped. We have to aim for this one. And then it bends parallel, and that backtracks, and here's the image. So this is virtual, and right side up, and reduced. This is real, upside down, and could be larger or smaller depending on the spacing. Next up, a convex lens, but this time we're closer in than the focal point. What happens now? Parallel beam bends through focal point, but this is too close to converge, so this is going to back up. Green beam through the center of the lens. Backtrack. Blue beam. But we can't go that way. We wouldn't hit the lens. So if we go this way, imagine the lens extends far enough, we would eventually, pardon my artwork, have them all meet here. This is a magnifying glass. It takes the object and makes an image on the same side, larger, farther away. Same physical object as a movie projector lens, which would take, say, an upside-down piece of film and produce a large real image on the screen. This is a diverging lens, like a nearsighted person would wear. Okay. Uh, what about mirrors? Concave mirror. If here's the focal point, there's only one focal point for a mirror. There are two for lenses, equally spaced, but there's only one for mirrors. So let's say we have an object just past the focal point. Parallel beam goes through there parallel to the focal point, beam bouncing off the center, goes that way, and beam through the focal point goes parallel. I'm doing quick rough sketches. Uh, so this is making a real inverted image, which in this case happens to be larger. All right, but what if we are closer than the focal point? Well, then we're basically using a makeup mirror. Uh, if the focal point is here and the object is here, the parallel beam will go through the focal point. The green beam will bounce off the center, reflect angle of incidence equals angle of reflection, and can't go through the focal point, so go as if we came from the focal point. And, well, if the, if the mirror extended up enough, remember these are assumed to be thin. Oops. The mirror would bounce the light this way, which we would backtrack here, and that's a makeup mirror. It's making a larger right side up virtual image. Okay. Um, so that's concave mirror in both cases. A convex mirror is a shiny ball. 
So the focal point is behind the mirror, right? Focal length is negative because for a mirror, anything in front is positive, anything behind is negative. If I have an object like this, it doesn't really matter where it is because it's not going to be close to the focal point, focal points inside. Parallel will bounce away, being at the center of the mirror, as always, reflects at the same angle. And if you aim at the focal point, you will bounce parallel, and that backtracks, and that backtracks, and we get our image here. All right, that's one, two, three, four, five, six examples. One more, a flat mirror. So if we have a flat mirror and an object here, it doesn't have a focal point, right? But it sort of does, but it's like a shiny ball that's very, very big. The focal point's off at infinity. But we don't need that because we can say a parallel beam, well, it's a flat mirror, so it's going to bounce straight back. So we would backtrack it. The beam that hits the center is going to reflect. And we can backtrack that. And sure enough, those two beams are enough, and we get a virtual image the same size, the same distance on the other side. So if DO is positive 10 centimeters, DI is negative 10 centimeters.